So I've got my character and I've got my base mesh for it. And now I want to start saying, how can I make the clothing for it? Uh, if you haven't managed to get your character design up to this point, rather than staying behind, I have another project for this week. It's a simple base mesh and you can kind of go from there and work on the sort of style and the concept that I'm going to give you for that so that you don't have to fall too far behind on things. But it, ideally, you're working on your own project and your own character. Now, what I have here is my character and it has all of my stuff in on this character, including, let's do this solidify modifier. What are you doing for me? Nothing right now, that's good. And how about my mirror? My mirror is still in there, great. So what I have is a nice solid base mesh with just this on it and nothing much else. Actually, let's uh, get my wireframe on because I want to smooth some of this out. Just use my edge slide, get them back into place, perfect. So I got my character design, I got my thing here, and you might think I have to rebuild all the clothing, but I've actually got the clothing mostly here to create the base for my clothing. What do I have in my character? I got these boots, I got these pants, I got a shirt, a sash and a belt, and I got this sort of vest thing. And we've got most of that all right here on the character right now, because it's mostly gonna follow the character's shape, so we can use the characters, the basis of the character shape to help us out. So here's how I like to approach something like this. I go through and make sure I kind of clear out any other accessories. Always good to name things in case you haven't. But let's start here. And start breaking down all the parts of my character. Get rid of these uh, eyelashes from last video. Trying to get in my way. Good time to name things. So. This is eyelashes. This is eyebrows. These are my eyes. And this is my character low, my hair cap. Great. And I don't really need these right now either. So what I want to do is take my little base here and I'm going to duplicate this because this is going to become the basis for my clothing. So I'm going to go into local view to look at just the clothing by itself. I could turn things off, but I find it easier to go to view local view. You'll know you're in local view by seeing that you're on this little local here. And now what I want to do is get rid of anything I don't need for the clothing and split things up where I can. So let's start with where the pants kind of start from. Probably right about here, which is where the waistline is. I can select these items. It's still in mirror mode, which is great for me because it just lets me do half the work. I can right click and in the right click menu, do edge split. And let's do the same thing now with the boots. So taking my perspective down there, how far do the boots come up? Well, right under the knee mostly. So let's go right about here. Maybe a little, maybe just one tick lower. And I'll do an edge split. There we go, that's where the boots are. How about these hands? How far does my collar need to come down? Well, the cuff looks like it comes all the way down, but it actually kind of flares out. So I'm actually gonna take it, let's take it to right where it starts, like maybe where, where it, bit, like it starts like tight to the body, because I can do the rest of it sort of flourishing off. I'm gonna do an edge split there. And how about the neckline? Well, I got this sort of open neckline for my shirt, which I can, definitely work with and cut out, but for now, let's pretend the collar is tight and it's closed. So I'll start from there and I'll do an edge split. So now I've like really split things up. Let's take my three to set this and L and L and we'll just delete these faces. So we have these items by themselves. And now I'm gonna hit all of these P and I'm gonna do by loose parts because I've separated these into different pieces. I come up to my display. I turn on to random, we can see I have now separate pieces for all of these. And if I want this little jacket guy here, I'm just gonna duplicate this again. Again, getting in and out of my local view, I set my hotkey for it, but it's the same kind of deal. And instead, I'm just gonna go and take, to make the rest of this little thing here, of course, you know I have to cut the sleeves off, that makes sense. So let's go ahead and select all these edges, right click, and let's do an edge split. Three, L, X, and delete the faces. 
going to turn back face color back off because I'm not retexturing it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete these faces running along the center here. Or actually, you know what I'm going to do? Make it this a little easier. It's going to make a cut right down along the middle here because this is going to become the opening to my vest. And so now I've got all these various pieces. This is now the start of my vest. This is my shirt. This is the rest of my character. I have the basis for all the pieces of my object, but we need to do some modeling, right? Because it's obviously not there. So how are we gonna do that? And we want these pieces to overlap each other a little bit. Because truthfully for the character, when I come back to Luna, and this is my, my little Luna here, and I'm gonna duplicate this again, because this low will just be Luna, we'll call this like my body. And I like to keep working versions of things in separate files. So maybe I'll say like, this is my working version of Luna. This is where like my high poly can go into. So like anything that comes into here, like the head is sculpt, which is super dense. I can put in here my low poly base. I can put in here. So any of these elements, I don't really need some of these. Always a good idea to just kind of clean a couple things up here and have my reference back there, which is still nice to have, but I might move those as well, because why not? Set my side reference. Front, side. M, I'll put them all in this working here. These are all my different pieces. And I can turn off my working just channel, just to clear things out. Because I have a duplicate of that body, and now I only need the parts of the body that I can actually see that aren't part of everything else. So um, we can do a similar thing that we did before. And instead, I'm just keeping just above that line. So it's very similar, but instead of like where it's at, I'm gonna go one level above it and cut it off. So cut that out. And then for this, I'm gonna leave a lot of this up here because again, I need some space for the head where the collar and everything is, but I don't need much more than this. Let's go to the front view. I'm going to do my little lasso select because I only want as much as I need to see. This is the thing I see a lot of people get into trouble with when they create when they keep too much of it and they think they're going to need all of it. I made a duplicate. If I ever need to come back and grab some of it, I totally can. It's not going to be that hard, but it's much better to have only the parts that I need. And then on the back, of course, I've got that big collar up there. So I'm actually going to have a lot less. I accidentally selected a lot more than I need. There we go. And this can just go around the back here, something like so. And then I'll just paint up. Enter. Pull these together. And let's go and add lasso. And if I hold shift, it's going to add to it. I want to make sure I've got all the parts that are part of this back. Something like this. Mine's a little bit more complicated because I have some more maybe that I have to show here under the clothing. But I think it's getting a little tricky to just select what I want. I think that's going to be pretty good for my character. So between this Let's select just the boundary of this. And so I'm going to go space. It's called boundary. Select boundary loop, which is just the outside of this. And I can right click and do my edge split here. So three, and I just want L. And this is literally the rest of the body. So I don't need it. Again, that's why I made a backup. So now I only have parts that I can see. Again, think about like, I don't need to model this part of my shoulder because my sleeve is, my shirt is covering it up. I'm never gonna have my character take all their clothes off, so I don't need to have anything under it. And it's gonna save me a lot of time and energy. And you're like, why did I sculpt all that? Because it's building up the form and it's building up the shape. And the clothing is gonna need to settle on top of it. 
So let's take this now and start forming this into the base model version of some of this clothing. So the shirt now has plenty of room to work with, and I can take things like this geometry and maybe puff out the sleeve a little bit. So let's take the edge here and two, go from the front view, maybe about like lining things up. I'm gonna hit E and then S. We can see I'm gonna flare out this little piece. Let's see, if I get weird shading like that, I always wanna check it out and make sure I don't have any internal geometry. It definitely seems, let's go to local view on this because I wanna make sure things are looking good. The best way to double check that, of course, is going up and doing face orientation. Exactly why some of it flipped backwards. All right. In edit mode, one, let's hit A to select everything, M, merge by distance. Okay, zero vertices. Now we're gonna hit control N and that conforms everything to the right direction. If I need more edges on these ruffles, which I probably will, you just add, you know, maybe a two would be pretty good. The rest of the geometry I can keep mostly the same. And then for the shirt, I can open up this collar by turning off clipping here and saying like on her character detail, comes down to, I think right about here is as much as I want to open the shirt. So clipping. Get in a little freeze up here. Let's turn off my mirror. Doesn't like that for some reason, even though I have clipping off, usually it's not a problem. I guess I could always just delete this mirror. Oh, I have this symmetry turned on, that's why. I guess I still had symmetry mode turned on in this viewport, which is why it was giving me so much trouble. Didn't realize that. Okay, this symmetry needs to come off. Now I should be pretty free to get this clipping off and then open up the shirt a little bit, just sliding it back. I can hit GG and that will slide it along its axis. So just creating a little space for it. It's not the exact final shape. I'll do a little sculpt on some of this to get the shapes that I want. And now I can get this collar. And so again, the collar should come up from these edges. So let's get this character back. And similar how I did the last piece, I'm just gonna extrude it up and just kind of pull it out. I can hit one and O is my um, proportional edit which depending on how large this thing is, I can use the mouse wheel to scroll it to get the right size. Mm, seems to be stuck, there we go. Something like that. I might give one extra edge to it. And then these, I want clipping back on because I want to pull this collar back into the center. This works a little bit like sculpt mode, but it works more in our edit mode. So it's a good way of just, just nudging some stuff into place. Okay, our basic collar there for our shirt. Let's take this item here, of course. It's uh, pretty tight to the chest, but we need it to come out and go down below our pant leg here. Similar kind of thing. Let's say two. Go all the way around. Looks like it goes over so there's no, you know, slit out the back. That's okay. I'm gonna just go straight down with it to about here. And then I can scale it up. Let's turn off clipping here again and just move it out. I'm gonna hit O again to turn that off. And this one got weird because they overlapped each other. And I'll, I'll be coming back in here with some of my more conventional mirroring and modeling tools. Turn clipping back on. And let's give it a couple more divisions running along here. Maybe about, trying to keep it even, maybe about that many. Next stage of that, so you can see clothing's kind of already coming together. 
we want to add some thickness to this clothing and I'm going to do that with my solidify modifier. It's the best way to do it by far. In fact, uh, even when I'm rigging up the characters, I leave it this way because adding thickness with solidify works really well and um, the computer calculates it really well. It doesn't get confused. You can set the offset a different direction, but I like to set it relatively to zero. And then we can do the same thing with my vest here. So I've got to solidify. Oh, I put the solidify on the vest. I want to solidify on the shirt too. So solidify modifier. Uh, and sometimes you exaggerate how much thickness. I'm going to set this one over the top. So I'm going to set it to one. And I'm going to give this a... Let's set it to... Let's set the shirt to zero. Give it just a little less thickness. And then I'm going to set the collar to be offset over the top. And I'm going to give it just a little more thickness, like a 0 0.01. So again, pieces coming together. And you can give these colors if it's going to help you at this stage. But for right now, I'm leaving it here. This I don't have to give any thickness because it's always overlapped by something else. Um, the boots, however, of course, need their own little collar kind of thing. So I'm going to take this here. I'm going to hit E. S and then I'm going to hit E to kind of pull it down and into place and then S to scale these out. I'm going to do the shoe because I need, you see I've got like a sole and a heel there. Well I want these as separate pieces so what I'm actually going to do with this because I'm going to want to sculpt the shoe but I want the sole to be its own thing. I'm going to select these bottom faces. Just holding control to go around. I'm going to shift D to duplicate, right click to put it back there. P to remove selection, and this will be my sole. And now with my sole selected and uh, sort of identified by itself, I can do some stuff to flatten this and give it more of the shape I'm looking for. So I'm gonna like, it's gonna start here, but then I want that heel maybe to come from this spot and it should sit on the ground. Actually, let's take the whole thing and just go E to pull it down a little bit. Now I'm gonna select all these edges or these faces, I should say. To look at it from the side view, I'm gonna hit E. I'm going to right click and then G straight down and I'm going to go S Z zero and I'm going to say G Z. Let's say get this to snap. I'm going to set my snapping mode here to increment absolute grid snap G and let's get it locked into the middle here. Great. And then this will be the sole for the rest of my shoe. Which I can take these and flatten them out. From here to here. Here to here to here to here to here, here to here, all of this, and then S C zero, and I can also set Z to zero right in here. Does like the same thing in this little box. Didn't like that, but that's okay. It took just a second to update. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Got it popping through here, but I can fix that pretty quickly. Control I, I'm going to invert everything. And I'm going to deselect these bottom, because I want to keep the soles all on the bottom. Everything else can come up. And then I can hit G and Z. Lift it up. Just to about there. Making some adjustments here to get it to fit my boot. But this will be part of the process to like shape things out. This is going to be inside the shoe, so I'm not super concerned with its shapes right now. I'm going to want to pull that back when I do some of the detailing. So now I have a good basis for most of that major piece of my clothing. You know, something like how would I do the belt or things like that, or the sash? Well, that's going to be more of the clothing sculpting or process like that. A belt is just an object I'm going to wrap around the waist. I think the next stage I want to show you is 
Um, and let's add a couple more edges in here. And let's add that thickness modifier, solidify, because it's going to help us wrap this up over and make it a full boot, is what I want. But it's going to go in again, which is what I'm looking for. Great. So here's the basis of my character clothing. Nothing's overlapping. It's all there. And you can see with by having good clothing to start with, we actually have most of our work. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we actually can take this and start sculpting it.